Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2 and I'm back again with another book review. <coughs> Recently I re read Russell Shorto's um, Descartes Bones and honestly I had no idea at all that Rene Descartes contributed so much to our modern day sciences including that of anthropology. Um, Rene Descartes was the first philosopher, modern philosopher, or he could be said to have incarnated philosophy, <coughs> I can't even talk, philosophy as we know it. He was a discoverer, he, he was a man who enjoyed the mechanisms of every anything and everything. He can be said to be the modern proponent of what we know today as forensics. Had it not been for him, there would be no Sherlock Holmes. Um, <laughs> it's like six degrees of Kevin Bacon here, but he's connected to absolutely everything and the the knowledge of science as we understand it. Um, his belief was rather intriguing. He thought, unlike Harvey, that the heart itself was a furnace and that blood was boiled in the heart and went circulated throughout the body when Harvey knew very well he studied it that the the heart actually pumped the blood and circulated it throughout the body which we know is true um, <clears throat> apparently Rene Descartes had a following and it was a cult following of people known as Cartesians and they felt like Rene was kind of a god in a way. <laughs> um, this is really a fascinating book and I'm not going to go really too much into all of it because there is a lot of information here but all of it is just absolutely incredible and the whole idea behind the book itself is the the robbing of his grave. He he died in 1666, and I forget what he contracted. And he didn't want to be helped by anybody because, oddly enough, and ironically enough, he had been studying um, disease and how to counteract, contradict it, counteract it, and the possibility of main, uh, obtaining immortality. He. he he was into a lot of different avenues. Um, he apparently had a paramour. He had um, an affair with, well, it wasn't really an affair. He he slept with her, had a daughter, and I'm not sure how many people were involved in, in that part of his life, but uh, apparently the skull went to the paramour and the bones were scattered after the robbery <clears throat> there was a a bone that was fashioned into a ring by the man who had a morbid fascination with him he was uh, a man who actually helped us with um, I guess you can say I think it was the first coroner. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but there's quite a bit of information in the book itself, and it's it's all very concise and very <coughs> intellectually challenging, I think. But as far as the book is concerned, I was absolutely compelled by it and transfixed. And having been a fan of Descartes myself, um, I couldn't help but <coughs> be, <coughs> excuse me, interested in everything that I read. And it's actually not a very long book in and of itself. It's only about, mm, well, including the notes, it, this is just a bibliography. Two, eight, well, not, excuse me. Including the index, it's two ninety nine. But <coughs> it's 
and explain one thing I learned in anthropology that uh, there was a racism in anthropology when it was developed that um, Caucasians were superior and uh, Negro people were closer to um, apes which I know is a complete and total lie um, <laughs> they were saying that the bigger the skull is the, the more intelligence the the brain house, which is also untrue. They know this <laughs> because there are a lot of um, researchers at that time, a lot of anthropologists that were rather skewed in their views, and uh, their opinion was right. And Descartes was actually similar to this because he he was a huge egoist. He he was a narcissist. He was bombastic. He was um, volatile. Uh, I ran out of water. <laughs> Dang it, but he truly was a very intriguing, well, he, he was kind of a hard person to get to like because he felt like everything he did was the right way and the only way and everybody else was wrong. He made, he also made fun of Pascal, which I'm reading this and I, I actually thought it was really hilarious because, um, his views and Pascal's views were entirely different and he even accused Pascal of having a head full of wind and he was very scatological in his refuse of Pascal's work so that that part I felt was very very amusing and I did not know that I just felt like well you know I should know better not all scientists get along and not all scientists see eye to eye they think that their opinions are higher than everybody else's well not all I, I shouldn't say that because that's a um, kind of a hasty generalization there not all scientists really function in this way but <clears throat> I myself don't because I know that my opinions um, are not entirely correct and I'm still learning and I'm always going to be in the process of learning and, and this book actually opened my eyes to how certain mathematicians and certain scientists didn't always agree with each other and they all had their own opinions and and etc but this this book is very intriguing and it's it's very uh, approachable even though a lot of the subject matter in here it's, it's quite a lot to digest I, I do admit to this but other than that it is just a marvelous book I highly recommend it especially if you're a mathematician and you want to learn more about Descartes or if you are um, a budding philosopher and are intrigued with his uh, Cogito Ergo Sum which was his, um, the main thing that he's known for um, and it really is quite tremendous I feel and uh, he, he really truly changed the world in which we know it a lot of what we owe today to our modern science as we understand it and how we operate can be traced to Descartes so we owe him a lot and a lot of what surrounds him is also mystery so there's still that and that's what makes it all the more um, exciting I believe and that's why I love books like this because it truly opens your mind to adventure and discovery and he was that he he too was uh, a sojourner and he didn't stay in one place for long he always wanted to figure out more and he wanted to grasp the mechanisms of everything he saw including the human body and uh, the composition of rocks and it's and so on and so forth and it, it just really is a truly um, marvelous book and I guarantee you won't be disappointed with it even if you're not really um, taken by the ideas of higher mathematics and well, he, he actually inspired calculus and we know that but um, if you're not really um, keen on those particular um, disciplines it's it's still a really interesting book despite all that so don't let that intimidate you 